Welcome to the Lipis Report. Hi everyone, we're, we're here at iSim City and we're about to start doing some tests that go beyond just one box. So we're doing two Catalyst 6500s to really stress some major features around MPLS, VPLS, and IP multicast. So uh, I have Sean Wargo here from Cisco, and we're going to talk through the configuration that we're going to be using for these tests, for both IPv4 and IPv6 around MPLS, VPLS, and also IP multicast. So Sean, why don't you kind of walk us through the config that we're using? Sure, Nick. So um, as Nick described, what we have here is you know the same uh, Catalyst 6500 we've used before, and we've also introduced an additional one uh, that we were using for the upgrade test. And we've used the, the new 6900 modules here to interconnect the two devices together. Now, so they're being connected together by ether channel, 10 gig, and how many links? So each one it has uh, 10, uh, excuse me, eight uh, 10 gig ether channel connections for a total of 80 gigabits. Uh, and the reason we've done that is we wanted to demonstrate the 80 gig per slot and at the same time be passing traffic over all eight of those 10 gig links. Um, so now what I've done, if I can direct your attention, Nick, to um, the way it's set up, and you can kind of see it just by the way the cables are, yeah. is that some of these uh, eight ports are going to the ICSI itself and generating the traffic, so you can see the lights blinking here and here. And then the additional eight here are the eight that interconnect with the other chassis over here. Now. Exactly. Now the last point that I really want to point, make is that rather than just doing eight in one line, um, some people you know want to do it that way, um, but from a nice redundancy perspective, in case one of the modules were to go down or something like that, a, a, a redundancy form, then what I've done is I've done eight of, of the traffic on two different modules and then the other eight in the middle on the other two modules. Right. So we have four on uh, slot number one going to Ixia, four on slot number two going to Ixia, and then the other four on slot number one going to CAT 6500, number two, and the same thing on slot number two. Exactly, so no matter which step you're at, there's 80 gigabits of traffic being passed through it. Great, excellent. Great. So that's the basic setup that we're using? That's the basic physical configuration, um, and then on top of that, as you described, uh, we have an IPv4 and MPLS, so it's running uh, BGP, multi protocol BGP, and then on top of that, you add the uh, label distribution protocol, which enables multi-protocol label switching. And um, then above and beyond that, you can also enable IPv6 or 6VPE. Uh, so now I'm running not only IPv4 over this um, LDP, but I'm also running IPv6 traffic over it. Um, and then I can also do, in addition to unicast, I can run IP multicast over that traffic. Yeah. And then last but not least, uh, the new uh, VPLS, which is Virtual Private LAN Services, which is a, an L2 VPN running over an MPLS core. Yeah, great. Excellent, Sean. So these configurations, the MPLS can be used for, could be network virtualization, it could be interfacing into an MPLS uh, server from a service provider, a VPLS to basically extend or stretch data centers uh, across um, geographic distances at layer two, IP multicast, really just to kind of demonstrate the huge growth in, in video traffic and how you really need to support IP multicast across these, these high links. Quick note too, uh, IP uh, or MacSec and VPLS, really interesting solution, encrypting uh, traffic across data centers with VPLS. So just keep that in mind, we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, great. Hey, Thanks, Nick. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for watching. Well, network virtualization, uh, or the ability to divide a physical network into multiple logical networks with unique attributes, is a design that has grown in popularity as IT business leaders have sought ways to segment their network with different attributes for different user groups. This is particularly popular in healthcare, education, travel, and other industries. Network virtualization can be implemented either in IP or in MPLS. For network virtualization, we are sure that IPv4 and 6 perform equally well in the Catalyst 6500. In addition to network virtualization, connecting the Catalyst 6500 directly to service provider MPLS networks is another popular design. Therefore, we test for both scenarios next.
Now, MPLS and VPLS are very important uh, network design options and um, for this particular reason. For active-active data center operation, disaster planning and load balancing, a best practice is connecting data centers via MPLS and VPLS. So MPLS slash VPLS layer two connected data centers delivers LAN-like service over the campus and or wide area network. Layer two connectivity is important as server to server communications expect layer two connectivity as most applications have been designed for this assumption. For connecting more than two data centers, VPLS offers mesh connectivity between these data centers. In essence, data centers connected via VPLS look and act as if they are on the same local area network. Therefore, we want to assure that IPv4 and 6 forwarding rates are equally high performance in this scenario, and we test for that. For IPv4 traffic over MPLS, we measured throughput via RFC 2544 and the Catalyst 6500 achieved the performance we expected and is thus verified. For IPv6 over MPLS traffic, we measured throughput via RFC 2544 and the Catalyst 6500 achieved the performance we expected. We compare IPv4 to IPv6 over MPLS performance and verify that the Catalyst 6500 delivers IPv6 performance on par with IPv4, noting that IPv6 headers are nearly four times larger than IPv4. For IPv6 over VPLS traffic, we measured throughput via RFC 2544 and the Catalyst 6500 achieved the performance we expected. We compare IPv4 to IPv6 over VPLS performance and verify that the Catalyst 6500 delivers IPv6 performance on par with IPv4, noting that IPv6 headers are nearly four times larger than IPv4. I just want to thank you all for watching. That concludes this edition of the Lipis Report. Thank you for joining us. Look for us every Tuesday and Thursday. To get your free subscription to the Lipis Report newsletter, go to www.lipisreport.com. To sponsor the Lipis Report podcast, send email to sales at lipis.com. We've got to go, and so do you. See you next time.